Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Recently you saw me build all of the miniatures from the hunt for the Prometheus Dystopian Wars starter set by War Cradle Studios. I'm now going to get on to painting them. Now of course remember this is just the way I'm painting my miniatures. You can paint them any way you like. I encourage you to experiment, be creative, use any colour schemes you wish. This is just how I'm putting my figures together and maybe you'll pick up some tips along the way and it'll make it a little bit easier for you to paint your own. So let's get right into it. We're going to prime the miniatures and then start painting them. It's time to cast off. Let's go! Now the first thing you want to do is get your working area organised. Over here I've got all my miniatures ready to go. Then I've got all my paints. I've got three racks here of Citadel colours built up over a long period of time. There's also washes over there, some technical paints, metallics, nice range of paints. Of course you don't need this full range of paints. You probably don't need too many at all, but I will make a note of which colours I'm using for my particular colour schemes as we proceed. Next up I've got a red grass wet palette. This is absolutely essential. If you're a miniature painter you really do need a wet palette. You can put colours on the palette and they stay wet and you can mix them and blend with them. It is an essential part of miniature painting. And I'm very happy to say that on this I have the brand new red grass membrane which is a new reusable membrane. And this will be coming out with their new Kickstarter. They're not only coming out with this new membrane but they're also coming out with a new palette entirely. Uh, so very exciting stuff. Keep tuned to the Esoteric Order of Gamers because I will tell you more about that. Uh, I love red grass products and I use them all the time. Over here I've got a glass of water of course, my brushes. Now at the moment I'm using Rosemary & Co Kalinsky Sable brushes. Um, they're great, they're a little bit cheaper than Winsor & Newton but they're still very high quality, uh, highly recommended. Uh, I've got sizes 1 and 2 I'm using there. And of course some paper towel which you'll need for getting rid of excess paint when you're dry brushing, cleaning your brushes, things like that. Always important. If your eyesight is as poor as mine you might find something like this handy. It's a head loop. I stick this on my head, it magnifies what I'm doing. This is just a cheapy one I got on Trade Me which is the New Zealand version of eBay. Um, it's cheap but it's, uh, it works, does the job. And of course you might want to pour yourself your favoured beverage while you're painting. The other thing I do is that I get my earpods here and I listen to podcasts while I paint. Uh, it makes the time pass and I'm not engaging my brain too much while I'm painting so I enjoy listening to uh, audio books or podcasts as I paint. Now the first thing I'm going to do is prime all my miniatures. And as I said usually I'd use a white or a black for this but in this case I want to work up from a neutral grey and I have this Mechanica standard grey lying around so I'm going to use that as my primer. Go outside when you spray uh, prime your miniatures and I highly recommend you wear a gas mask as well so you don't breathe in any nasty fumes. Now before we get started I discovered a mistake in my first video. I missed putting these tiny little shields on the front of the Commonwealth cruiser and frigate ships. So make sure you attach these little shields to the front. You can see this is how they look and uh, complete your ships before you start painting. So this is how I've set everything up for undercoating. These are all blue tacked to this piece of card so I can easily move it around without anything falling off as I prime them. So these are all the enlightened ships um, and the SRS tokens here. These are all going to be undercoated in white. And then over here I have a sheet for the Commonwealth ships. You can see they're all blue tacked on there. These will be undercoated in the Mechanica Standard Grey. And then I've got all the separate little weapons and I put blue tack these on sheets of foam core like this. Um, and I'm just going to undercoat these black because I'll be painting them uh, pretty roughly with um, a metallic colour. So uh, keeping those all separate. In fact I can probably not only undercoat them on these sheets but paint them on these sheets as well. Little blobs of blue tack are just keeping those in place. And there we go everything's primed and now it's time to start painting. The first one we're going to paint is the Commonwealth Cruiser and this is a, a good ship to do because it's very indicative of the paint scheme I'll be using in both the larger and smaller ships and I've taken inspiration for this paint scheme from the artwork. Here it is here. Uh, this is very metallic uh, the artwork but I've gone for more of the gunmetal grey 
And, uh, you know, I did try a ship that had a bluer feel and didn't like it. So I've gone back to using the Mechanica Standard Grey, which is the uh, primer, and then just dry brushing up from there. And I'm pleased with the final results. So let me show you how I painted this. The first thing I'm going to do is take my prime miniature and give it a dry brush uh, of Dawnstone. So let's take this, give it a shake. And for this I'm using um, a makeup brush as a dry brush. And this is because the uh, bristles are very soft. Uh, and this is a good thing to use for dry brushing. I've got another one here, um, which is also good for dry brushing more detailed work. This is a makeup brush. Uh, they're not incredibly cheap, but they're not too expensive either. And they're really good for just using for dry brushing. So I'll take a bit of this Dawnstone, wipe most of it off on my paper towel and then give the entire model a light dry brush, generally going from uh, top down on my strokes, all over the model. And this gives it a pretty subtle highlight all over. The goal is to not actually show any brush strokes or minimal brush strokes and just hit the raised surfaces. There we go. Now after that's dry, which won't take long, I'll give it a lighter dry brush using Celestra Grey. And with this one I want to be even more subtle. And just hit the most raised areas. You can see just the edges like so. Very soft, careful little light dry brush. Just picking out the very edges. Giving the whole model a sense of, of depth. See, I'm just getting the, ed uh, the uh, highlight areas of these little triangles here. And there we go. So that's the basic paint job done of the grey. It's very, very easy to do. And now I'll start filling in all the details. Before anything else, I'm going to do the deck because uh, there's lots of detail like the pipes and everything that are over the deck. So uh, you want to get in there and do these wooden areas. And for that, I'm using Scrag Brown. And I want a pretty small detailed brush for this one. I'm using a number one brush. And of course my palette. Put some on my palette. Add a brush full of water. And then carefully paint in those decking areas. And you really have to go at it from multiple angles here so you can paint that detailed decking. And see, I've already gone over on one of the pipes, but that doesn't matter because I'll be painting over that later. You sort of have to point the end of your brush into the nooks and crannies. If you do get it on any of the um, areas of the ship, you can use a bit of water to wipe it off before it dries. That's a little awkward, but um, just be patient. You may even have to do two coats for some of these areas if the grey is still showing through the brown. Don't worry if you um, painted some grey areas by mistake, you can touch them up later or you'll paint over them. Next thing I'm going to paint all the metallic areas, uh, the normal metal colour, and for that I'm using Iron Breaker. And with Iron Breaker I'm painting the pipes and the areas under the weapon mounts. These will be hidden by the weapons but I might as well just paint the metal and all the metallic details on the deck including those tiny little um, I don't know what they are little bits poking up out of the deck little pipe ends or something and these parts 
and then the whole um, chimney stack arrangement at the top of the ship. Next up is the decorative shield at the prow of the ship and I'm painting this Retributor armour. More metallic details are done with Balthazar gold and for this I'm painting the pipes around the central stack or tower And a few other details like this knob on the top of the command centre, the various doors about the ship, this row of windows at the front of the command section, and some of the stacks on the top of the tower. So there's a mixture of gun metallic and this brass in the chimney stacks to make it a bit more interesting visually. There are a few red details throughout the ship. I'll start with corn red when it comes to painting these, including the main shield detail at the prow of the ship. There are two different designs for this. One's a star and one is this um, other shape. I've used the star for the frigates and this one for the main cruisers. There's also this star detail on the port and starboard of the ship and below that a little light as well. Now it's time to wash the entire figure and bring out some of the detail. I'm using Agrax Earthshade. I want my miniature to have a, a slightly dirty used feel so uh, this is what I'm using. First I'll wash over all the decking and piping areas. making sure it doesn't pull too much in the details. If there's too much ink in a particular spot, I can mop a little bit of, of it up with a dry brush. I'm also washing over the rest of the metallic areas, including the uh, pipes and other metallic details. And then I start reinforcing some of the darker shadow areas on the miniature with the Agrax Earthshade. So places where there'd be a dark shadow where I want to, want to emphasize that, I'll carefully paint in the wash. And this is where I'm not using the wash just as an all over wash, but using it to delineate the shadows a little bit more. You can see I'm painting over these uh, cannon bits, and then I'm going to pull some of that down so it's kind of a drip effect and wipe most of it off. And that makes it look as if um, dirt and uh, residue has washed down from there. I'm wiping most of it off with my finger, but I just get the effect. I'm also reinforcing the lines of the miniature with the Earthshade. Reinforcing those shadows. And this makes it look a lot more realistic. There's more of a contrast between highlight and shadow. And I don't have to be too neat when I'm doing this because, as I said, I want this to be a used looking ship. It doesn't have to be straight out of the dockyards. As you can see, just reinforcing those shapes, even the rivets, anything that would just have a bit more shadow. 
and a bit more depth. And you can really see what a difference this uh, shading pass makes when you see this side of the ship and then I'll turn it over to the side that I haven't done yet. And you see it's much cleaner and flatter. Um, the wash really gives it three dimensions and gives it a sense of scale. And there you go, we're really getting somewhere now. It's almost finished. Just a little bit more detail work. Next I'll highlight the decking with Death Claw Brown. Just carefully doing this with a very, very thin line. I don't have to highlight every single plank, but just to put in some of these highlights gives the decking a little bit more depth. After that's done, Stormhost Silver is used to highlight all the metallics, whether brass or metal. Don't forget to highlight those tiny little pipes that are popping up through the deck. And of course the smokestacks. Now it's up to you, you might want to drill a hole in the top of the stacks. Um, I'm still a bit undecided about whether I want to do that or not. Um, but if you put a hole in the top, don't forget to highlight around the rim of that. You don't have holes in the top of the stacks modelled into the miniature. But you can choose to do this with a pin vise if you wish. Also highlight all the gold at the front. Little dots of silver. Now I'm going to do a final highlight on the grey areas with straight Celestra grey. And this is just to reinforce the very top highlights on the grey areas. Sometimes I'll put a little errant highlight line in like that just to give it a sense of being worn. There are large scratches or dents in the metal. You can also see here I'm using the edge of the brush just to do those sharp highlights. So running the edge of the brush along the very sharpest highlight. And of course, highlighting all the little gun barrels poking out from the sides of the ship. Finally, the last highlights of the red with straight Mephiston red, and then mixing a little bit of white with Mephiston red for the very finest highlight. Of course, don't forget to paint the guns. 
These are very easily done with a rough dry brush, almost an all over paint really, of Iron Breaker. Then I'll paint in the two pipe areas with Balthazar Gold and the top lights with red and highlight the red. Once that's done, I'll wash the whole thing with Agrax Earthshade mixed with a little bit of Null Oil. It's generally brown, but just a little bit of black added to that. Once that's dry, I'll highlight with silver and of course highlight the red with a red and white mix. And here are two of the completed ships. All that remains is to use exactly the same techniques to paint the rest of the ships in the fleet. Uh, as you can see, pretty easy to do and you end up with quite an effective look. Here's the smaller frigate and as you can see, it's painted in exactly the same way giving you a nice consistent look throughout your Commonwealth fleet. Well, I used all the same techniques for painting the Borodino, which is the resin ship of the Russian Commonwealth. And uh, it's exactly the same type of ship, except with a little bit more detail. As you can see, I did the dry brushing uh, passes, then carefully painted in all of the decking areas in Scrag Brown. Uh, and making sure I'm getting all that detail in. And then moved on to doing things like the gold detail and the bronze as well. And in the main turret there's a, a bronze area and also underneath the uh, underneath the star and also the main star itself. Painted in the red lights and details um, and then did the Agrax Earthshade wash and detailing. And it's really just a matter of going through and detailing as much of the ship as you want to. I just shadowed every kind of dark area. It makes it look a little bit grim and gritty and used, but that's good. Here I'm using Hawk Turquoise just to paint the unusual area of this ship, which is this main kind of glowing frost weapon thing in the middle around the star. So a layer of Hawk Turquoise and then Ice Blue to very carefully pick out uh, the raised areas surrounding the star with a fine brush very carefully picking them out and once that was done I mixed a little bit more white with the ice blue and highlighted this even further and I also brought some of the blue highlight over onto the bronze star so it looked as though the light from that is was reflecting onto the main star so really most of the attention uh, in painting the ship went to this star area it goes up to almost a white before it was finally done. And also remember to put some of that reflected blue light on the area just around it as well so it looks as though it's glowing. Then it's back to highlighting all the decking area which took a little while but just carefully highlighting as much of that uh, as possible to make it look good and then a final very light highlight on the grey to make everything lift and uh, have a nice contrast between the shadow areas and the highlight areas in just the same way as I painted the earlier figures. Some final highlighting passes with silver and light grey and it was almost done. Of course I'd already painted the uh, weapons separately so when they were painted separately and varnished I just had to pop them onto the main body of the ship and the Borodino was done. And what a spectacular model it is. Some beautiful models in this new Dystopian Wars set. I'm really impressed with it. It's going to look great on the tabletop when they're plying the waves. Here are the three main ships from the Commonwealth fleet. You can see the Borodino, the cruiser and the frigate and they look great. So come back at next time and we'll be painting the Covenant of the Enlightened fleet. I'll see you then.